Uh, this message goes straight to the president. Bali, things are not okay on the ground. Things are not okay on the ground. The people on the ground, the leadership that you have on the ground are not telling the truth. Things are not okay. everybody welcome to the village zm i am so happy to have you guys here with us um to listen to this wonderful episode um i don't know if you can hear it in my voice but yeah i am very happy um <laughs> before we even get into anything i just want to say um that we stand with sister sister foundation it is very unfortunate um what is happening to them right now via the media and certain politicians who want to join in the twisting of the story behind the main purpose for the march which was a march against um sgbv sexual gender based violence we have worked with the sister sister foundation on um an episode and we're actually working on another one with them we had a beautiful project that we were going to put out we are inspired by the work they do and the amount of help they give they have helped a lot of women that have been abused um in all sorts and all forms and honestly they've done the job that victim support and a lot of other organizations that are you know government related that are supposed to be driving the narrative and trying to help these people um yeah some of the work that they are supposed to be doing that's what the sister sister foundation has been doing and they genuinely have a heart for what they do they are very passionate and you know i think one thing we kind of have to understand in our country is that radicalism um is necessary to drive change when you have people who are on the radical side of doing things it means they are just passionate i i say that because i'm a radical person myself and i think it's absolutely necessary to have that i think let's get into the episode now so today we are starting a series called punch for punch and basically the aim of this series is to directly address the elephant in the room Or should I say punch the elephant in the room but no 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 <laughs> we, we don't want to attack animals here so <laughs> yeah but um yeah basically it's just we feel like we generalize um talking about certain areas or certain topics and sometimes there are certain issues that happen in present day time that we want to address in real time and give some proper insights and discuss in depth So with me today I have Lusungu and I have Sui. How are you guys doing? Good, good. No, actually I'm not okay, man. Uh, the state of our economy is taking a toll on my pocket and my mental health. So no, I'm not okay. <laughs> it's okay, but I'm not okay. Yeah, I'm not okay, but it's okay. Mm, the new dawn is good morning. Mm. Man, it is dawning. I guess you know this is the thing that was spoken about. You know, it, it, it's a dawn of a new day. The question is, what day is it? Feels like a bad. Day. I heard some politicians calling it new doom. I died. <laughs> 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 
Then to kill cockroaches. <laughs> oh my god. Ah, I wish you were in Zambia. <laughs> <I was. laughs> no, we just laugh so that we don't cry. That's the moral, man. That's the moral. I'm so dead. Anyway, so um, so today the issue that we are trying to address is um, the dual carriageway deal. And um, the dual carriageway is supposed to be a road in between Lusaka and uh, Ndola. Um, the road going further down the copper belt is already a dual carriage. So, yeah, this project is a project that we've been hearing about from 2016 to 2017, you know. So it's it's something that, you know, has constantly been debated by the opposition and the current government then and now the op- that opposition is now current government and that one is that other one is opposition now so you know a lot <laughs> has changed since then and now you know you know the the old deal was cancelled which was worth 1.2 billion US dollars and now we have a deal which is cheaper and inverted commas but anyway we're gonna talk more about that so I don't know Sui um would you like to give us a uh, more details about the deal yeah of course um let me just give a breakdown of you know some of the 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 scope of the project essentially um it's like we've mentioned dual carriageway from Osaka to Ndola and there'll also be bypasses um going around Kawe and Kapiri so you don't have to go through um there's rehabilitation of the Masangano Fisenge Luansha road and a few other yeah constructions added to this, and so there's it's it's being done under a, a private public partnership or is it public private partnership PVP uh, model, and the concession period is 25 years, split into a three year construction period and a 22 year operation and maintenance period. Um, as it stands, the total cost of the project is about. Um, about 650 million US dollars, um, 577 million for construction, and then there's all the other working capital and interest payments in, in, in the rest, all that, all that stuff. And so, okay, the details of the consortium that has uh, basically, yeah, that, that, that's given, that's been given this uh, contract, if, if we can call it that, um, are as follows. <laughs> So it's 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 gonna be well the concession agreement has been awarded to a consortium called Macro Ocean Investment, which consists of Avic International Project Engineering Company. Um, you correct my pronunciation on this, but I think it's Zhenjiang Communications Construction Group and China Railway Seventh Group Limited. So yeah, essentially it's you know it's a Chinese uh, consortium that has been awarded this contract. Now. Typically, in PPPs, they have their own financier. However, this is a very unique um, case because the financing of this project is coming from three institutions. One of them is NAPSA, National Pension Scheme Authority, and they will be financing about $300 million. And... Workers' Compensation Fund Control Board are lending this consortium $100 million, while Stanbeck Bank Zambia Limited is lending $200 million. So the total comes to about $600 million of what's being borrowed. And yeah, this money is being borrowed by a special purpose vehicle, which is registered by Macro Ocean Investment Consortium. Um so yeah, without without getting too far and me, you know, getting too far ahead of myself in this conversation, those are the details. Those are the facts uh, as 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 they have been reported, and yeah, that's that's really what you need to know if you if you ask what this deal is about. Okay, thank you so much for that, Sui. Um, so just based on what you have said about this Chinese consortium and the deal and all the details involved. Um, in your opinion, is this the best deal we could have come up with? 
Well, I think that that's a question for the people of Zambia. Um, I have my opinion, but I don't want to like be imposing. So I'm just going to present my analysis of this deal. What's happening here is that we have a Chinese consortium that has been given the concession to, you know, to build, to construct, to design, construct, and maintain this road for the next 25 years, which means that they'll be the ones collecting tolls uh, from the road and everything uh, related to that. And so essentially what they're doing is they're borrowing money from NAPSA, Workers' Compensation, and, and Stanbic. And then they, they will pay back that money to NAPSA, uh, Workers' Compensation, and Stanbic, and they will essentially walk away with everything else once they've paid it back with interest. So, you know, when you consider this, you think to yourself, if NAPSA, Stanbic, Bank, Zambia, and Workers' Compensation Board, Workers' Compensation Board and NAPSA are, you know, it's basically the people's money. Um, if they have the financial capability of doing this, wouldn't it be prudent? Wouldn't it be pragmatic? Wouldn't it be intelligent to instead then just be the concessionaire themselves? That's that's the question that I think people need to think about in deciding whether this is a good deal to lend money um, to this Chinese consortium or to be the concessionaire themselves potentially and basically uh, put out um, a you know put out a call for someone who can do the construction on their behalf and then they would you know proceed to manage the financial aspect of, of this you know of this road which I believe is projected to return close to if not above a billion United States dollars over the concession period. Okay, I think just for our listeners, when you say the consortium will walk away with everything else, um, just please shed more light. I just want people to understand like the inner details okay. of this. Okay, so part of it obviously is the government will get a cut of of the toll fees that will be collected, but the consortium is is essentially going to manage it as a private asset, and so the way that they get in inverted commas their money back for their investment is through uh, collecting, you know, toll fees and stuff like that. So in, in, in me saying that they walk away with the money, it, it, what I mean is that, you know, they'll, they'll be able to get the return on their investment. They're essentially borrowing money uh, to conduct this project. So they're borrowing money to invest in this project and will manage the revenue from the project for the next 25 years. Damn, that is a long time. Is indeed okay. You know what? Before I even say anything, um, Lusungu, um, what about you? What do you think about the deal? Is there any was this the best way? Um, I guess just as Sue has put it, you know, there, there are so many things that that you have to look at, and you know, like once you scour, like off, off, uh, once you look at social media and everything, or look at the news reports and try to get in all the depth that you can about this deal. You get to realize that this deal is good in a way. Um, I guess just as we put it in, is that it, it does have some advantages to it. You know, it, it's a good investment, I guess, for Napster, for um, and everybody else who's involved in it. But then when you look at it being like the best deal that it can be, as you put it, I feel like it, it sort of falls short. And weirdly enough, like Sui and I like are in agreement of this because it falls short on on the very essentials. It's a fact that. We're giving away Zambian money to a non-Zambian entity to construct something and rip the benefits for it long term at the expense of the Zambian people. I definitely get you on, on that part. I mean, look, the core of, 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 of this is just the fact that, you know, a lot of people have argued that, look, it's a good deal. You're giving away, you know, a U.S. dollar loan at 9% interest, which is amazing for U.S. dollar returns. But it's like, no, like you can literally, instead of having 9% interest, you could be having close to like, I believe it's close to 
80 to 90 percent profit on this project over 25 years like you could have 10 times what you would have by offering this as a loan that's what's annoying i think for me that's just to like keep it brief that's like annoying that's the only way i could put it true true because it definitely is because i guess it comes back to certain things that we've said about how actually you know it even goes back to to some extent to to the conversation that we had last week on on the third world sui series you know about how you know we tend not to do things for our own benefit but then we end up you know giving somebody uh we keep on what's what i'm looking for what's what i'm looking for what's what i'm looking for we keep on empowering other people instead of empowering ourselves you know mm-hmm. this is something that you know could have been done in such a way that zambian um Zambian construction companies benefit from it because um, what's it macro ocean, whatever it is, is, is just a group of Chinese owned, at least from what I can see that all Chinese state owned companies. So why are we doing this to empower Chinese state owned companies? I feel like they're taking enough from us already. Why aren't we like empowering ourselves? Why not just give, you know, Zambian construction company, A, B, C, and D and let them do it? Because I feel like we have enough power. We have enough resources. And if we don't start trusting ourselves to like, you know, be able to build or construct these things, how are we going to be independent from them in the long run? Though I feel like I'm digressing, but anyway, that's just like where my mind is with this whole deal. Yeah, definitely. That's super relevant to consider. I mean, it's, it's, it, it, it all comes down to our own, you know, our own empowerment as well. I mean, the infrastructure sector, the construction industry has been deeply depressed in the past few years and more so since this administration yeah. took over. I mean, there was extensive mismanagement. I'm sorry to say this, but it is the truth. These are the facts. These are the things that people need to know. Several, you know, construction companies, companies in, in, in you know, infrastructure development uh, as a whole have found themselves yeah. um, on the brink of bankruptcy if they haven't gone bankrupt because they've had either their ca- their contracts canceled maybe with cause in some cases but in most cases without cause almost and um and they've also been you know not paid because it's like okay one argument that a lot of people would make is that these contractors are not performing they're non performing contracts so we need to cancel them okay how do you expect the contractor to perform if you haven't paid them you know, and, and one of the things yeah. in engineering, and you understand this because you're an engineer, Lusungu, is that, you know, you need the financial resources to keep things going. If you don't have money, it's very difficult to do the job. And, and that's the biggest, you know, bottleneck in, in most uh, in most uh, production processes, more so in our current, you know, infrastructure development sector. And so the way I see it, it we really have to introspect we need to look within and decide what direction we're going because my opinion is that we're essentially just giving away money in handing over this project to uh to a non-domestic uh consortium yeah i i hear you man and it's true i guess as an engineer i do understand what you mean and i do understand the complexities to do with how a project can run you know how a project can't run without accurate, without proper funding and everything. But then I feel like it doesn't even take an engineer to like figure that out. This is not like rocket science or anything like that. This is just something that is simple and easy, something that each and every one of us knows. In order for us to get any project done right or anything done right, it needs adequate funding. You know, it needs to be, you need to make sure that you're paying people on time to make sure everything happens on time. But then with the way that, government i guess can't seem to get anything right with the important things anyway it's very hard for like any projects to really be sustainable you know it's hard for projects to actually move it's hard for them to actually grow and i feel like it's really made the whole environment or the entire yeah the entire infrastructure environment super terrible for like zambian construction companies it feels like instead of them being given all the tools that they need in order for them to grow it feels like they're just being cut off under their under their legs and it only benefits those people like or oh, is it the the bigger construction companies who have got more or a bigger um, operational budget who can actually put in more and who can actually wait for zambia to pay off whenever they decide to pay off but um 
I guess before we get into a rant, um, Malimba, you might want to cut in here and stop me. Otherwise, I'd end up talking forever. Yeah, I want to give some of my thoughts as well. Like, I feel like local debt is not a priority in Zambia. Yep, doesn't seem to be. Yeah, and that's a very big problem because the thing is, yes, you're doing macroeconomic stability, trying to re- negotiate with your international debtors and everything, but local debt, you seem to delay. And that's the thing. This deal, let's say if if um, if the government, were go- if, if NAPSA were going to have to pay people locally, do you, do you guys honestly think, like based on what you've seen, um, happened in the previous contracts the past 10 plus years, do you think that the local contractors would be paid in a shorter period of time in comparison to the foreign contractors? Well, in my experience, privately funded jobs, well, let me not say privately funded jobs, jobs that are not funded through government directly to tend to go very well, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> So, yeah, anyway, we we can all draw statisticians who say no correlation is not causation, whatever, but no, that's the cause. It's just... Um, so the way that I see it, bro, local contractors, if they could be paid, they are capable of doing it. And I could cite a few examples that would allow us to do that. Mr. Moderator, sir. Okay. Um, in that case, Sui... You can uh, go into it, bro. Let's get into it, bro. Obviously, like, it would have been nice if, you know, some local contractors would have been brought into the mix. Maybe they were, or maybe they did suggest some ideas, but I don't know. Um, I don't know. Do, do, do either of you actually uh, know of any um, plans or any alternatives that were suggested to, to, to government? Um, well, <laughs> yeah, over the years, there's been several proposals that have been made by local engineering firms, basically unsolicited proposals that were made. So I have it on good account that, you know, proposals have been made to do these things through, you know, local um, local engineering firms, local consultants and, and constructors, or is it contractors? Mm-hmm. I, I prefer to say constructors. <laughs> yeah, local constructors. Um, and so, look, the way that the way that this could potentially have been done through, you know, the use of capable local um, engineering firms is like this. Dual carriageway, it's whatever, 327 kilometers. Um, people, I'm sure, will be familiar with the towns and cities in between. So for the purpose of this explanation, I'll use what most people refer to as a contractor, as a constructor. So basically, you group five teams of one consultant, engineering consultant, and one constructor, which is person to actually do the building. Um, and, and so these five teams split up. One team starts off at Lusaka, going north towards Kabwe. The second team is at Kabwe, heading south towards Lusaka. And, you know, you split that distance so they can work pretty much simultaneously. Then you have a constructor at Kabwe heading north to Kapiri. That's the third team. The fourth team from Kapiri heading north towards Ndola. And the fifth team from at Ndola heading south towards Kabwe. Obviously, with this particular deal, there will be more intricacies with, okay, who gets to do the Masangano uh, Luancha Road and all that stuff. But the point is, you know, you can get local firms to, to partner up and do this project in this way. And this would be super efficient to do because, you know, essentially you can have work happening at the same time. And the beauty of a dual carriageway is that you don't have to interrupt all of the traffic on the current road. Obviously, the current road is in such a bad state that the first thing that you need to do is, is you know, maintain it and at least make it drivable. But, you know, you build one road, you move the traffic onto there and then rehabilitate the other side, bring it up to, you know, up to the standard and you're good to go. So, you know, that's, that's one of the considerations that was made in, in an unsolicited proposal. And intriguingly, 
there's been other proposals made, you know, unsolicited, um, basically explaining that, you know, an institution like NAPSA has the capabilities to finance these projects, not give a loan to someone who's doing them, but to actually finance them. And that would be infinitely more beneficial for NAPSA, ergo for the people of Zambia who, you know, contribute to NAPSA for their pensions. Yeah. True. True. I hear you. I like how you started off, you know, by by, by giving us a piece, you know, of, of how a, a proposal was given to us of a better way. Was it a different way of doing it, you know? And then, you know, it just makes you wonder if, oh, why exactly is something like that was rejected? Is it rejected because of its complexity? Because it feels like there's a tendency to do things that aren't in the benefit of the greater majority of the Zambian people, you know? I guess it's um, it brought about that conversation that we we had a couple was it should have been a couple of days ago about um, incompetence versus greed. You know, like what exactly is going on in some of these politicians' mind? Like, what exactly is it that that fuels them, that drives them into doing what they're doing? When you hear about something like what you just told us that that proposal, and even um, NAPSA's role or how NAPSA can change their role and how they can benefit more from it you get to realize that there's definitely more that we can be doing in Zambia to like build us up, you know, so much more that we can be doing to like really create, create good and amazing opportunity for us and not create opportunity for, for any, I don't even know if we can call them foreign investors. Like, like what are they now, you know, foreign construction companies? Like, I, I don't see the point in it. Yeah. I mean, it is, it is definitely a complex situation but again there's there's a lot that's at play i mean napsa has actually financed its own project it's financed several housing projects of its own which it mm-hmm. considers as in its investments it, it's financed a few roads if i'm if i'm if i'm not mistaken it's actually financed some roads in 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 a model not too different from what this proposal um had stipulated in terms of financing these roads and having them owned and managed by a consortium that NAPSA is a part of. So yeah. it's, you know, it's not unheard of. And that's the part that really raises the questions. Like what's, what's really going on? What, what, you know, what's going on in the minds of, you know, the, um, the key, I guess the key um, facilitators of this deal when they basically decide Okay, we're just gonna, you know, give away some free money, some free money um, that could otherwise end up in the treasury, or better yet, <laughs> in in you know, as part of the retirement for you know, after twenty five years, that's basically us. Like I'm trying to retire in twenty five years. I mean, it will be young, but like you know, <laughs> we're trying to retire young. So like I'm thinking, like y'all are actually, you know, like reducing my pension right now. <laughs> But anyway, that's I digress. That's that's a whole different story. It is, it is. But I guess, I guess, as, as much as it is a different story, though, I feel like it 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 is connected, isn't it? Because you get to look at how, again, I, I feel like I'm parroting myself, but we keep on finding new ways of not putting Zambian people first. You know, not creating space for the for the everyday Zambian, not looking. At, you know what is good for for the Zambian and maybe not even now but looking at it like in the next 25 35 years I've heard people talk about like this deal and whatnot and be like oh yeah this deal is gonna be amazing it creates is it over 2,000 new jobs I can't even remember um, mm-hmm. or maybe I'm mixing up my math <laughs> I don't even know it does it, it is projected to create close to 2,000 new jobs but then the question is are jobs really what the Zambian people okay yes the it is what the Zambian people want. I'm, I'm not saying no, but then like, is it really what the Zambian people need? I think my phrasing is a bit wrong and weird right now, I guess, without the context. Why are we giving the Zambians the middle income to low income jobs and then giving out, you know, the high income jobs to the non-Zambian people? Because if we're looking at like the people who are going to be getting in, like most likely like the big money or the real money in this thing, it will be people who are part of AVIC, part of uh, the Jejang Corporation and, uh, and whatnot. Those are people who are going to be like getting top tier people. And most likely they're going to be Chinese, non-Zambians. So why are we doing or creating a situation where we give non-Zambian people the jobs or the high tier jobs 
and not even giving them like the opportunity to grow. When in reality, what we could do is, you know, give these contracts to the Zambian people, you know, give them something to own, something to create, you know, something to be like, oh, this is ours, you know, and really feel like it's ours. Because as much as a job is important, I feel like just creating that sort of environment, which really does allow like more people to grow, more businesses to grow, is something that is truly beneficial in the long run compared to just giving people, you know, the middle to low income jobs. Now, I don't know if I was coherent and you could get what I mean. Yeah, I, I definitely get what you mean. You pose the question saying, why are we doing this? And I, I mean... <laughs> Uncle Julius Malema would would say that himself, <laughs> hey, and I don't think we're ready for that conversation. So, <laughs> so maybe we maybe we shouldn't get too too deep into it. But yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I put it down to. I think it's I think it's a very aggressive expression of, of self hate. Um, but again, that's a whole different story. It is a whole different story. It it, it is. But interesting though. Interesting. I give you that. Yeah, I, I want to bring Malimba back into the fray because we haven't really heard from him. He's moderating our conversation, but he's just, like listening to us rant. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be the only one ranting. We know you're trying to vent too. <laughs> I I only have one comment, and that's about the jobs thing. And for me, my my concern with the whole jobs thing is, um, yes, it's good that they are creating jobs, contractual jobs, and everything and stuff. But especially for people who are at the bottom of the chain, like what happens when the contract is over? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But also, just tying this back to third world Sui in context, I, I made an argument about the need for us to shift away from employment creation to value creation. There is a billion dollars plus of value being created that's that's what the story should have been about we should have been able to say you know in the next 25 years zambians are going to have a billion dollars of value created on their road instead people are patting themselves on the back for a nine percent loan and i feel like (laughs) that is actually depressing there's no other way to put it well It is depressing, to be honest. It it truly is. And um, I guess it's part of a larger conversation that we need to have later on. But then it comes back, I guess, the mindset of the people who we put into service, you know, and how they keep on focusing on, um, let's, let's say, the wrong thing, you know, and how they keep on giving us what what they think we want instead of giving us what we actually need. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yes, thank you so much for your contributions, guys. And um, it's been an amazing conversation, honestly. I 100% agree with um, almost everything that you guys have said. Oh, <laughs> you guys too much credit, you know? I know, right? Almost. <laughs> almost. Almost. Like 99.9. No, no, no. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Anyway, but yeah, um, I am so grateful for this conversation. And I hope that in Punch for Punch, we have more meaningful conversations like this. And um, yeah, I don't know. Like, like thank you guys. Um, this is awesome. Any last words, uh, Lusungu? <laughs> I wasn't ready for it. I thought you were going to start with Sui, man. You've been starting with Sui the whole day. Why are you switching up to me now? I guess it's it's, it's super sad, you know, to me, when, when you get to see like all the ways in which we go out of our way to make foreign companies, foreign investors, anything foreign comfortable in our own country at the backs of the Zambian people. Like it's about time that we, we begin to change, you know, we begin to see the value, the importance in ourselves and we stop trying to rely on all these foreign companies, foreign investments, foreign whatnot, you know, let's look at each other. Let's figure out a way to take out all these Chinese state owned companies out of this whole deal. And we find a way to look at, I don't know Zambian Zambia construction. I, I don't I don't know what, what 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 these companies are. You know the biggest construction company is in Zambia. Look at getting them on. Look at seeing how can we make all this happen. You know how can we truly build a better Zambia? You know for 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 Zambians by Zambians. You know something like that. You know let's go old school on it. Mm-hmm. 
FZBZ for Zambians by Zambians. Exactly, right. man. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you, Master Sui? Um, okay, well, closing thoughts. How much time we got? <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got all the time you need. <laughs> no, we don't. All right. Time is off, my girl. <laughs> In brief, <laughs> I've been, since I've been advised, very aggressively advised to time myself, I will say this. I think that, you know, the dual carriage weight is necessary, but the means the means must be considered when we try to justify the ends. And I think that there's a better way that we can do this. And it's not really to say that we want to always be criticizing this administration because, you know, if they do something good, we'll pat them on the back and send them thank you cards and flowers if we have to. But there's a lot of that though. Sorry? We owe them that though. It's their job. They're yeah. getting paid. Yeah, no, no. But what I mean is we, we appreciate the good things, but then when we see a better path, a path that's more beneficial for you know for their constituency, which is the people of Zambia, then you know we have to we have to sit up and say, no, but guys, you know, there's a better way that you can do this. And and that's really the thing that you know that's really the thing that we have to that's the conversation that we have to be having right now is is there a better way that we can do this is there a way that we can ensure that value that we create or that can be created is used to the benefit of citizens of the republic of Africa? Yeah. What I missed, I heard some criticism of 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 my. What it was an error. At what? Eh? Say it with your chest now. Uh huh. No, you no, were, we were oh, just talking about the you phone structure. Yourself, and this time you thought you got it right when you got the phone call, but just as well because you said constructor instead of contract. No, it's constructor because I said like I prefer to say constructor. Mm. <laughs> as I told you. <laughs> I right. said he knows. I said he knows he's wrong, but he's doing oh. it anyway. <laughs> no, but think about it though. A contractor is just a person with a contract. A constructor is a person who builds. It's a constructor contractor. <laughs> so anyway, let me let me let me let me pick it up from there.